if we see a similar set of problems with the 7000 series, this could be a reason for me to avoid them altogether. In this video, I'm going to be asking four of the biggest unanswered questions that I have about Ryzen 7000 and the AM5 socket. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack, born a rock star in this life, gone live it up, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is going to cover memory, a curve optimizer, big graphics and small graphics, and also graphics driver compatibility. Now before we go on, feel free, if you feel that I've missed out any important questions, feel free to add them to the comment section below. Not that they're going to get answered, but it'll be fun to know what you guys are thinking about. Now it has been about five years since Ryzen first made its appearance. And we're now about to see the arrival of the next generation Ryzen chips. These are launching just a few days from now, and they're going to be on the all new uh, AM5 socket. Now, whilst the first launch was eagerly anticipated by AMD fans, it didn't really win over all the Intel fanboys who were a bit sniffy at first. However, many of those did eventually fall in love with the new platform. Whilst the excitement for the upcoming launch may not be quite as fever pitched as it was for the first launch, there are definitely more people now who are watching AMD, interested in getting the hardware and willing to give them a chance if they, if they haven't yet used AMD. Now when the product does launch, we're going to learn a lot and there have already been the usual leaks and rumors giving us uh, unverified uh, data and also some discussions giving us some good data, but also raising some questions. Uh, there are four key questions that I would like to know the answers to, and some of these I really want to know the answers to before going for an AM5 build. Number one, memory and performance sc scaling, memory speed and performance scaling. How well does performance scale with memory? Now, last year there was some research that showed that the AM4 socket does benefit from faster DRAM, and we know that the AM5 uh, socket will require DDR5 memory, but how will performance improve as memory speed improves? Now, as well as the research on the 5000 series CPUs, I also did some research on the 5000 series APUs and found also that faster memory does increase performance noticeably. When it comes to DDR5 and AM5, is it still useful to purchase the fastest memory that you can get your hands on? That's question one. Question two, the 5000 chips can use Ryzen Master's Curve Optimizer. Now that's a really, really useful piece of software that AMD give out uh, with uh, for, for enthusiasts basically to do overclocking. Now, Curve Optimizer can provide peak performance without the high voltages and high heat associated with traditional overclocking. Can we use Ryzen Master and Curve Optimizer on the 7000 series? Now, if you want to know more about Curve Optimizer, I have a guide uh, that I will link to below. So that's question two. Question three, the new CPUs will have big graphics and small graphics. But what's the difference in performance between these two? Some CPUs will have the same powerful graphics we find on the 5000 series, the 5700G and the 5600G. These are called APUs and uh, these will support gaming and content creation. I have quite a number of videos on the performance of the current generation APUs, which you can watch if you want to see the kind of performance possible on the 5000 series APUs. But with AM5, even the non-APUs will have onboard graphics. These are the so-called small graphics. How good will these be compared to the more powerful APU graphics? Question number four, graphics driver compatibility. Now this is a big question. Graphics driver compatibility, now since most of all the AM5 CPUs will have onboard graphics, presumably all AM5 PCs will automatically download AMD graphics drivers because that's what Windows does. Will we have complete compatibility between the AMD drivers for their graphics, the Nvidia graphics drivers and the Intel graphics drivers? 
Now I have a video on some of the experiences I had when combining the uh, NVIDIA RTX and AMD onboard Radeon graphics on the same PC. That's for the 5000 series. And you can watch that to get some sense of the sort of issues and challenges that could arise. I've seriously considered ditching the 5000 APUs because of some of these issues. If we see a similar set of problems with the 7000 series, this could be a reason for me to avoid them altogether. So that's the four questions and hopefully over time, we'll get some sort of clarity on these questions. Uh, for what it's worth, I'll mention that uh, Intel have tested some of their graphics drivers, the new uh, Arc graphics drivers with AMD machines, and they've said that, 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 that there's compatibility there. However, I'm not sure if they tested the APUs and almost certainly they were testing the 5000 series. Like I say, if you have any of your own questions, feel free to leave them down below. What do you most want to know? about the AMD AM5 uh, socket and also the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs.